know, we already have our friends from Cred IQ joining us, uh, Mike and Shane. So guys, feel free to get yourself set up while I uh, get you guys introduced. So Cred IQ is a commercial real estate data and analytics analytics evaluation platform that tracks over 760, uh, seven, I can't even say numbers this big, uh, 765 billion um, in commercial mortgages across all major property types in real time, launched in May of 2002, Cred IQ has quickly become a preferred SaaS platform for brokers, lenders, leasing agents, and investors. Uh, I'd love to welcome Mike Hass and Shane Bison. Thanks, guys. Hey, Bethany. How are you? Thanks for having us. Great. Um, let me share my screen here. Thanks for that intro. Um, as you said, we are a commercial real estate data analytics and valuation firm. Uh, a little background about myself and, and the company. We had a soft launch in May of this year, right? The height of the pandemic, which was always a good time to launch a business. Um, we started this company for about a year in the making, um, a lot of research and development with my co-founder, Bill Peterson, who um, is listening in. We have uh, on the call, Shane Beeson, our director of sales. Um, so going back to um, who we are, we basically leveraged 20 years of research, data, and analytics to provide a one-stop shop to commercial real estate brokers, investors, leasing agents. And um, what we do is we aggregate lots of lots of current mortgage information and we evaluate it, we normalize it, and we standardize it to make it available to commercial real estate professionals all across the country. Um, with that, we run our own analytics platform, which then feeds into our valuation system, which is one of its kind. We just launched it a couple of weeks ago. We're very proud of it. Um, we've been in the Commercial Observer, Market Watch, Wall Street Journal. It's been a pretty fun ride for such a early company. Uh, one of our valuations back in May, which is one of the reasons why we launched um, was picked up by the Wall Street Journals for the Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami that was in default. And um, as we know, the hotel industry is being hit hard from the lack of travel and the overall economy right now. So we did a real-time valuation. Um, we valued it just under a billion dollars, suggesting a pretty high loss from its uh, underwrite, underwritten value. Um, so that was a pretty cool um, press, which helped us grab some... Uh, momentum. And um, ever since, um, we've picked up several hundred clients and users that were, uh, were listening to them or building on our features. Um, so just to go over our team real quick, as I mentioned, uh, Bill Peterson, he's kind of the brains behind the operation. He's been in the CMBS industry for 20 plus years. You can't tell from his, his gray hair. <laughs> um, myself, and then we have our CTO, SG. He is uh, industry veteran in commercial real estate data and uh, geospatial space. He, he was the former CTO of EDR, which was a, uh, a company owned by DMGT, which was acquired by Lightbox. Um, and then we have Shane Beeson, another industry veteran who's on the line here. Uh, Sarah Eckersley, uh, our newest uh, marketing and sales and business development on the West Coast. She's in San Francisco right now. And then two of our advisors, we have Zach Ruiz. Um, he was a global VP of technology for DBRS and Morningstar. Um, and we also have Lawrence Yuan, who it was the former CTO of 10X, who's been a huge help with uh, kind of designing our databases and uh, leveraging all this massive amount of data. Um, as we said, there's 765 billion of commercial mortgages that we update monthly. That is um, in every market, every property type, every month. Um, so with that, I'll let Shane talk about our client base and uh, a couple of our, our users and um, what they said about Cred IQ. Shane? Awesome, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks everyone for having us today. I'm Shane Beeson, uh, Director of Sales with uh, Cred IQ and we're thrilled to, uh, to present today. Uh, on this slide, we're talking about the different types of clients uh, that, that come to us looking for access to our platform. I'm not going to get into every single one, but a, a few highlights. Um, commercial leasing, uh, one of the data points that we track 
that's of huge interest to our clients is tenant lease information um, for office, industrial, retail, mixed use assets. We're tracking generally the top five tenants for each property. Um, and we're showing square footage occupied, percentage of GLA, and lease expiration dates uh, for each tenant. That's a, a huge value add to our clients. Um, distressed debt funds. Um, you can easily search our database by loan status, including loans and properties that are on service or watch list and special servicing, uh, 30, 60, 90 delinquent foreclosure, REO, whatever the case may be. I actually just had a conversation yesterday with a gentleman who is starting a fund focused specifically on distressed hotel assets. And we all know in this environment, there's certainly a lot of that out there. Um, and you know, even C CMBS investors, individual investors, obviously a great fit for our platform and even other types of clients such as appraisers, law firms, and even accounting firms, really anybody who's looking to wrap their arms around the entirety of commercial real estate and specifically CMBS loans and properties here in the US. Um, on the right, we have a couple quotes from our current clients. Uh, this lender in California brings up an important point, um, and that is the specificity of our borrower and owner uh, contact info. Uh, a lot of data providers, including one I used to work for, uh, we actually, I think, have a question in the, in the chat about that company. Um, they generally provide gen pretty generic contact info, generally an LLC or a corporation. Um, and I was always coached to say, hey, you know, with a little detective work, some Google searches, Secretary of State websites, you can find out, um, you know, who those owners are. That's a lot of work. Um, we have really done that work for our clients using a mixture of paid and public data sources. We're taking it five to seven levels deep if necessary. So we're providing specific borrower names, addresses, owner of record, um, up to phone, four phone numbers and up to two email addresses per contact, really specific and accurate contact information. So uh, next slide, Mike. Um, so this is kind of the, uh, the, the universe that we're tracking. Um, and so we're talking 765 plus billion of commercial, commercial or real estate mortgages all across the US, all major property types, uh, office, retail, industrial, multifamily, hotel and self storage are the top six. 40 million data points, uh, over 105,000 properties and loans um, 700,000 plus tenant lease and expiration dates, 400 MSAs across the country, uh, and really 20 plus years of data and research. And this last point is, is really important, updated monthly. Um, as far as where our data comes from, because of the strict reporting standards that pooling and servicing agreements hold CMBS deals to, all of our data comes directly from the trustees and servicers themselves. So this uh, really allows us to capture the entirety of that conduit uh, CMBS universe and keep it updated on a monthly basis. And then on the left, we'll see the types of data points we're providing from loan status to specific contact, contact info that we talked about, uh, maturity dates, audited detailed and line item financials, and as well as lease expiration. Um, so the bottom line here at Credit IQ, we're just absolutely committed to being the preferred SAS platform for brokers, lenders, leasing agents, and investors. And we're looking to be literally a one-stop shop for updated uh, commercial real estate values, uh, analytics, and research. Um, it's ambitious, but uh, we really feel like we're on our way and we're very excited about it. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it back to, uh, to my partner, one of our co-founders, Mike Haas, who is now going to dive into our platform and show everyone kind of what our output looks like. I, uh, I really think you're going to like what you see. So Mike, uh, back to you. All right. Thanks, Shane. Good overview. Um, so as you see here, uh, we actually have some live questions coming in. Um, as I go over the demo, maybe Shane, you can answer them or we'll, we'll definitely follow up with everyone who's on the line here. Um, real quick uh, to uh, look at our Instagram page. I was hoping to get to a thousand followers by the uh, by our presentation. So we have 13 to go. If you guys don't mind just uh, following us on Instagram, it's just cred IQ, It'd be great. We could do like the Zuckerberg countdown for a million users. Um, so here's our uh, live example of our platform. There's seven um, search criteria you can use right now. Um, if you want to select office, retail, industrial, all the major property types, self-storage, mixed use, net lease. And then you can narrow it down by market you care about. Say you want Philadelphia. You also want a couple suburbs around the area, Bluebell, Conshohocken. Uh, let's do Fort Washington. So you can do multiple cities at once. Um, 
You can narrow it down by building size, maturity date, tenant name, uh, loan balance, and then uh, loan status, which I'll get into later. But later, um, hit apply and see what kind of results come up. All right, 242 properties all around the Philadelphia region, office, retail. Um, then you can narrow it down by building size. Let's say like, I only care about 15,000 to 350,000 square feet. Let's narrow that down. All right, down to 120. Um, you can switch to a list view, which is pretty cool. There's, you can see here's a lot of data, subtype, building size, year built, the current loan balance, which is hard to find, um, the address, sponsor, borrower name, the originator, the loan purpose, um, a ton of data over here, all, to, all the way to the right, top five tenants. Um, quickly just find any property that you want. Um, all right, this example, it's a 228,000 square foot suburban office building in Bluebell, PA. It's uh, original loan balance is 31.5 million. It's now down to 26.9 million and uh, maturity balance is 25.8. Um, the loan was originated in 2012, so it has an upcoming maturity in July of 2022. Um, it was uh, a refi loan with GACC, it's a Deutsche Bank offshoot. The, you have, we have the issuance LTV, the, appraised, the appraisal value, the date, um, and even the uh, appraised cap rate um, that the appraiser used. Here are the borrower and sponsor names, summary financials, top five tenants. I'll show you a closer look at that. So we have a ton of ton of data points all on the summary screen. Um, we have about 300 to 500 data points for every property we're covering. Here's a uh, click into the loan tab, even more uh, granular details. Here's the interest rate. Um, if there's an IO expiration date, the loan term, um, whether or not it's distressed or if it's on, uh, if it's transferred to the special servicer, this one is considered distressed. Um, let's read what's going on. This is a straight commentary from the servicer. Looks like this one had, uh, Cigna was a large tenant that vacated um, back in 2016. They were paying, um, where is it? Paying uh, eight, almost 86,000 in monthly rent. So that caused the DSCR to drop. We have the loan status down here. Click into the property tab. Here's a nice, View on the building. Drop the little yellow guy if you want. Here's the subject. You can actually click Google and it'll pull you right to Google Maps. Here, here's the uh, appraised value. So this one appraised for 43.5 million for 191 bucks a square foot at a seven cap rate. I'll get into the valuation after this, but here's uh, the summary level financials. So the financials are updated uh, quarterly and we update them in real time as they're delivered. Um, we even get the detailed financials. So we have the base rents and the expense reimbursements, um, current occupancy, here are the real estate taxes, uh, insurance at a you know full dollar amount, dollars per square foot and percent of revenue, a ton of valuable financial details, which feeds into our valuation model, which I'll get to. Um, here are the top five tenants. We have their square footage, percent of GLA, and the lease expiration date. Um, this one has Toll Brothers and Pharma Companies. And then this feature is pretty cool. We launched this um, still in our beta. We're still ironing out some kinks, but this one, the comps basically are ranked zero to 10. 10 being the best, 10 meaning it's very comparable to your subject property, um, zero meaning it's not very comparable and you probably shouldn't look into it. So um, as you can see here, we ranked them. This one, Quaker Park, is pretty good comp, was issued in the same year. Uh, it's only four miles away. It had a similar LTV at issuance, uh, similar loan amount, 192 bucks a square foot. The appraiser's cap rate is 7.3. This next one, it's only 1.3 miles away. Uh, 
same sub market, but it was originated in 2018 at a lower cap rate, better market now, um, or it was. Um, and then we have next comp. So basically you can click into a comp if you want to dig down even deeper. This one, Keystone, Viva, same thing. You have all the information right here. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit. Contacts tab. We have the borrower, the guarantor, as Shane was alluding to, and the owner of record. There are two email addresses, the entity name, the entity address, and the owner of records address, and four phone numbers. Um, we also have the master servicer and the special servicer's contact. And we are slowly adding in the controlling class for the trust, which is pretty cool. Um, all this can be PDF'd in a nice clean report. Loan status, payment history, property, tenants, valuation. Okay, so back to the comp screen. Say I wanted to look at the second comp to see if it was really comparable. I'm looking at it. It's in Conshohocken, Quaker Park. Um, looking at their financials. All right, base rents around twenty six forty, twenty seven dollars. Let me see if I could value this property. And this is what really sets us apart from the competition. This is basically a streamlined. 10 year discounted cash flow analysis where the user can plug in their, their own assumptions under my queue. That's any variable in green, they can tweak and the value updates on the fly. So I was just running a test example. Say we found the uh, occupancy is at 85%. You'll see here the value will go up 31.8 million, 158 bucks a square foot. Say you think the rent is you know closer to 27 bucks, change that, the value will go up. 38.5 million. Let's see. Um, valuation at issuance for this deal is 38.8 million. 38.5 million. So we're using a 7.25 cap, 8.75 discount rate, um, stabilized vacant, stabilized market vacancy rate. We have average lease term, years to lease up, uh, lease renewal probability, TI package, and all the expenses. Um, what's really cool, I, I really like this feature is if you know the exact tax amount, uh, you don't want to use the dollar per square foot, you can just override that. So you can pick one of the three main uh, options to type in your variables. And uh, we just launched this feature where you can, you know, save a value or look up prior values. Say you have a, you know, your analyst is running a value for you. You want to see different scenarios. I did a couple um, last night. I said, all right, what if, um, what if these tenants that have upcoming lease expirations don't renew? What will my value look like? Could go down to 32.8 million, um, as you can see here. And then just going back to the search, um, you wanted to say, all right, let me let me look for distressed hotels in Florida. Go to the loan status, hit distressed. That basically brings in anything on the servicer's watch list, anything that's delinquent, um, 30, 60, 90, foreclosures, REO, if it's been modified, we'll have that detail. Um, let's see, hit that search. 489 distressed hotels right now in Florida. Um, let's try to narrow that down by balance. Say you only care about hotels in the 5 million to 30 million, $35 million range. Take a look here. Here's the card view. Switch to list view. So there's a ton of uh, hotel opportunities right now. Marriott, Fort Lauderdale, 
I think I've been there a few times. Um, this one. There it is. And another feature that we have I wanted to show real quick. You just reset that. You can also search by tenant. Say if you wanted to find uh, all the Hobby Lobbies around the world, around the country, quickly search that, hit apply. There's 169. Um, I didn't really know what a Hobby Lobby was up until recently. I thought it was more of a Toys R Us, but it's, I guess it's like a Michael's Crafts. Uh, click into one. This is a uh, Robertson's Creek Shopping Center. It's a 330,000 uh, anchored retail property in the Dallas MSA. Shane, is this your uh, is this your Hobby Lobby? <laughs> I've not been to this one, Mike. No. Okay. Um, so here, here are the contact details, financials. So yeah, that's um, that's what we have, and uh, I think we uh, there's still some time left. I'll show you a couple upcoming features that we're really pumped about. Hey Mike, before you uh, before you do that, I've got a question, um, and that was how do we get commercial real estate professionals who have always done things a certain way to embrace this uh, doing a better way like we're offering? It's a great question because there's a lot of old school folks uh, in commercial real estate. I was actually showing our platform to a guy uh, a couple of weeks ago who is so old school, he hadn't yet logged on to a Zoom during the pandemic, which is mind blowing, but that's uh, how he rolls. Uh, and he was able to log on, I showed it to him and it, it really just clicked in his head how much easier this can make his life as opposed to having to do all this on his own. It's like I said, the one-stop shop. He couldn't believe that he could easily do a search of you know, office properties in Dallas, Fort Worth, and easily filter which ones are in distress, find out who the contacts are, who the tenants are all in one place. And, uh, and he signed up uh, within a couple of days. Um, so I really, it's really just showing it to him. That's the, the biggest key is getting them on a Zoom, showing them the value and uh, you know, four out of five times, uh, it really clicks in their head how much easier it can make their life. But that's a great question. Back to you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just to add to that, um, we're, we're actually giving away to all of our listeners on the call right now an exclusive report. Um, that's a, an eight-step um, guide on how commercial real estate brokers can, you know, make more money easily and using, you know, this data and technology. It's a true, proven eight eight-step guide, and uh, we'll send that out at the end of this call. Make sure everyone has that copy of that. Um, and Mike, uh, Mike, the other question, if you wanted to weigh in on this, we have a, a gentleman asking if forbearance information is included. Yep. Yeah, we have uh, the modification date um, when it's executed. And we also have that it, it should show up in the service or commentary for all the modifications out there. Um, this new feature is uh, basically a historical timeline of all the market data we've collected at the market and submarket level. We have base rents, class A, class B, overall average, going back to 15 years. We also have the vacancy rates and cap rates, absorption levels, really pumped about that. And real quick, I'll show you a new feature on how to value a property outside of CMBS. Um, a lot of people were asking for that. So I'll just run through a quick sample, type in a property name, office, subtype, Urban, 200,000 square feet, let's call it. Main Street, um, Philadelphia, PA, 19103. Then current occupancy, let's say your office building's down to 80%. Your rent's 26, average rent growth, 1.5. Market vacancy rates, 12%. It might be creeping up. Average lease term, let's say it's five years. Lease up to stabilization, we'll say it's, we'll take two years. Renewal, 50, TI, 25. Leasing commissions, 3%. Collection loss, 1%. Free rent, let's say it's three months. 
Um, and then you can run through all the expenses down here. I'll just do the per square foot. Uh, insurance, about 20 cents. Utilities, $1.50. Repairs and maintenance, dollar. Janitorial, quarter. GNA, about a dollar. Um, payroll, let's say a dollar fifty. Advertising, just zero that out. Ground rent, assume it's zero. Management fee, uh, four percent of EGI, one percent of the replacement reserve. Average expense growth, we'll do CPI, two point five. Uh, DCF projection, let's say it's a ten-year uh, cap rate, seven point seven zero. Eight and a half cost of sale. Let's assume two percent. And then calculates the value forty one point nine million. If you're like, all right, I don't know if I really believe that. Um, click in here. You can see all the cash flows. Basically, a streamlined version of Argus with without spending all day plugging in your assumptions. Um, do your base rent, rent abatements, expense reimbursements, collection loss and all that, but I, I know we have uh, only five minutes left, so I'll stop sharing and we can uh, answer some questions here. Let's see how many Instagram followers we have. Ooh, we, we gained three, we gained three. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. I'll do mine after I'm working. So, so <laughs> the first question um, that came in, and thanks guys for tackling some of these questions throughout, but what happens when CoStar comes knocking? Is integration inside a larger platform part of the exit strategy? Um, we're, 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 we're open to um, partnering with multiple firms with our API integrations and uh, leveraging our relationships in, in the industry. They're, they're not, we've already been talking to major firms. Um, can't really discuss that right now, but um, yeah, if they come and knock in, we'll answer and uh, what we'll say. And, uh, Michael asked, I'm sure you answered, but all food groups? Yep, all the main food groups. Um, uh, office, retail, multifamily, hotel, self-storage, mixed use. Um, no, we're not doing residential at all. So all major commercial types, parking garages, um, student housing is a good one. Uh, we just signed up uh, a big student housing investor. Um, it's a good question. And folks, um, Mike mentioned their eight-step uh, their, their eight guide, which we'll get the links to you all. But I also um, chatted earlier um, a free trial link. So make sure to sign up and, and do that free trial. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, here's, so the, here's a, let me chat the, the sign up uh, guide. There it is. Everyone right. see that? I'll have to do it. So I'll, I'll do it while you guys oh. are answering the next question. Um, and it is what separates you all from the valuation technologies like Argus, for example, and you had kind of mentioned Argus. I think what sets us apart is our, um, we have so much data behind our valuations. It's not just the user going out and getting their own assumptions. It's right there, pre-filled. The comps are kind of sorted perfectly towards the top. We have the financial line items, the rent, uh, rent expense reimbursements, the detailed expenses, um, cap rates, current, we have current loan amount, uh, current um, origination, um, LTVs, the cap rates. These are crucial metrics that really move the needle for valuations. And it's right there at their fingertips. Chris asks, 765 billion of what universe? In reference to, I know in my opening, I, I mentioned that. Um, the commercial real estate industry is huge. Um, CMBS, which is the primarily uh, uh, focus point of Credit IQ, is makes up about 30 to 40 percent of those properties. So we're not covering the every single property, but of the ones that we are covering, we have a lot more data. We have about 300 to 500 data points per property. Jen, that's all for questions. You've got two more minutes. Any any parting words other than the Instagram follow? Yeah, I would just I would just say um, you know on behalf of of our my, my partners Bill SG and Mike we're really appreciative of CRE Tech and everybody uh, for listening today. Um, please reach out uh, our contact information uh, to schedule a targeted demo for you and your group uh, focused on your needs, your geography, 
your preferred asset classes, all that kind of stuff. Would love to run through a, a targeted demo for you and show you how we can add value. Um, so again, thanks to, to CRE Tech. Um, Mike, any final words from you? Yeah, I really appreciate it. Big fan of CRE Tech. I read your guys' newsletter every morning and uh, love what you guys are doing. Really, really happy uh, you guys had us on here. Thanks, gentlemen, for being a part of this. Yep. Take care. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot, Bethany. See you.